Welcome aboard to Rufio. My name is Joe. If this is your first time on the channel, thank you very much for joining us. You should definitely hit subscribe before you go any further so you don't miss out on this kind of content in future. And if this is not your first time on the channel, well, you have some problems, young man. You should seek help. But either way, thank you very much for coming along. Today's video is going to be about Dark Magician and the Dark Magician deck in particular uh, that we're going to cover in a how to play video. The intention here isn't to get you to walk away as some sort of expert. The intention is to teach you how to play the deck on a very basic, fundamental level. Take out all the filler cards that you don't really need to know about because there's tons of support out there, much like the likes of Blue Eyes have. There's just fucking garbage and absolutely no good to man nor beast. So let's get rid of that shit. We're going to teach you the important stuff. We've even got some sample deck profiles at the end as well. They're certainly not perfect and I probably haven't really played with them very much, but you can try them out and see how they get on. They're in theory okay, I guess, but seriously, check them out and uh, adapt them to your own style. Again, the intention isn't that you're going to walk away an expert, but you will walk away an expert in the basics. But I digress. Thank you very much for coming along, guys. We're going to get stuck right into the video for you now. Dark Magician, the card, has existed since the very beginning of the Yu-Gi-Oh! franchise. It's one of the key cards associated with the anime and is the ace monster of Yu-Gi-Oh!'s franchise's main protagonist, Yugi Muto. And as such, is a mainstay in the minds of people when they think of the show and the card game, much like Yugi's main rival in Seto Kaiba and his association with the Blue Eyes White Dragon. When I say that the Dark Magician has been there since the very beginning, you can take that very literally, with releases of cards, merch, and the like predating Konami's inclusion in the card game, and being a part of the original Toei anime, Season Zero as it's commonly known, with cards being released in the Bandai series, as well as collector's cards that predate the Konami ones too, not to be confused with the collector's res. It's also seen about a gazillion different prints, much like his counterpart in Blue Eyes. The card also has a psychic, which is, I think, worth mentioning, Dark Magician Girl, a fan favourite for, well, obvious reasons. For today's video, we're going to be looking at Dark Magician as a choice of deck. To do so can be a little bit tricky since, technically speaking, the amount of Dark Magician specific cards is hugely extensive, but very little make a usable deck. As such, we'll be covering Dark Magician, the better support choices, as well as some sample deck variants so you can have some idea of different ways the decks can be played. With this in mind, we're going to be looking at the main options you should consider, but of course, you'll get a broader view from the sample deck lists. Some example variants include Ritual Based Decks, Dark Magician Based Decks, Magician Girl Decks, Fusion Decks with the likes of Eye of Tamias, and so many, many more. Dark Magician on the whole is largely a more casual choice of deck, being extremely popular with avid fans of the anime, and tends to be seen more so at a local tournament level. Having said that, the deck does have a handful of known regional tops to its name, and as recently as January this year, put on a highly respectable finish, piloted by Yugi Tubing superstar Team Samurai X1. So what is it that the fans love about Dark Magician and Pals, and how is it played? Apart from the obvious love for this card's position within the franchise as an iconic monster, the deck is also loved by fans because, frankly, it's a lot of fun to play. Without risking this descending into a whole casual versus competitive standpoint, that's just one of those things that does keep people coming back. It's also worth noting that due to the insane amount of both direct and indirect support and options for the deck, regardless of which variant you consider playing, there's always a fresh approach that can be taken to your deck of choice, alongside being flexible enough to give it the best possible meta matchup, which is a huge pro for being able to compete. The playing style again varies from deck to deck, but largely the deck focuses on compact combos of play and then using the vast spell and trap support to control the board. Plus, a 2500 beta does sometimes come up too. Next up we're taking a look at the Dark Magician cards. Well, not strictly speaking, but I'm covering the main ones I suppose, including major Dark Magician support cards, variant options and more. I'd also like to mention that if you're here for a full rundown of every Magician related card, I've got some bad news for you. Sure, the likes of Dark Eradicator, Buster Blader, Dark Sage and the like are all really cool, but that would honestly make this video insanely long, and even at this length, it's incredibly time consuming to edit and make, so if that's not what you're looking for, well, that's unfortunate for you. Primarily, I'm going to be trying to cover the relevant support worth running, and I'll leave some wiggle room where I can. 
As with all of these videos, a quick disclaimer, I won't be reading the effects in full, so as to save some time on the video length, but I will be showing them on the screen for your perusal. This means that you can read the cards to get an idea of specifically how the effect interacts with other cards, but given that you're a Yu-Gi-Oh player, we know you likely won't be reading the fucking thing. So we start off with the Pimp Daddy himself, Dark Magician. So, Dark Magician doesn't actually have an effect, so here's the flavour text. The ultimate wizard in terms of attack and defence. With no monsters left on the field, I summon Dark Magician. Declare direct attack. Ah, you got me. Oh, just a master. GG. Which is a damn lie, but there you go. Dark Magician Girl. Gains 300 attack for every Dark Magician or Magician of Black Chaos in the graveyard. Dark Magician of Chaos. During the end phase, if it was summoned this turn, you can add a spell from your graveyard to your hand. This effect is a hard one to per turn. If it destroys an opponent's monster in battle, after damage calculation, you banish that monster. If this card would leave the field, it's banished instead. Magician of Dark Illusion. Its name becomes Dark Magician whilst it's on the field. You can only use each effect once per turn. During the opponent's turn, if you activate a spell or trap card or effect, except during the damage step, you can special summon this card from your hand. If you activate a spell, trap or effect whilst this card is face up on the field, except during the damage step again, you can target a Dark Magician in your graveyard and special summon it. This effect can only be used once whilst this card is face up on the field. Apprentice Illusion Magician you can special summon it from your hand by discarding a card. If it's summoned, you can add a Dark Magician from your deck to your hand. During damage calculation, if you have another Dark Spellcaster monster that's involved in battle, you can, quick effect, send this card from your hand or face up from the field to the graveyard to boost that monster's attack and defense by 2000 during that damage calculation. Palladium Oracle Mahad. When you draw this card, you can reveal it and special summon it. If it battles a Dark Monster, its attack is doubled during the damage step. If it's destroyed, you can special summon a Dark Magician from your hand, deck, or graveyard. Palladium Oracle Mana. When your opponent targets a spellcaster you control and no other card, quick effect, you can special summon this from your hand or graveyard. This effect is a hard one per turn. Level 7 or higher spellcasters you control can't be destroyed by card effects. And if this card is destroyed, you can special summon a Dark Magician Girl from your hand, deck, or graveyard. Next up we have Magician of Black Chaos Max. You can Ritual Summon it using Chaos Form. If it's Special Summon, you can Tribute a monster. Your opponent can't activate monster effects this turn. If it destroys an opponent's monster by battle, you can add a spell back from your graveyard to your hand. Each of these effects is a hard once per turn. Magician's Robe. During your opponent's turn, quick effect. You can discard a spell or trap to Special Summon one Dark Magician from your deck. During your opponent's turn, if you activate a spell or trap card, or effect, whilst it's in your graveyard, except during the damage step, you can special summon this card, but banish it when it leaves the field. Each effect is a hard one per turn. Magician's Rod. When it's normal summon, you can add a spell or trap from your deck to your hand that specifically lists Dark Magician in its text. During the opponent's turn, if you activate a spell or trap card or effect, whilst it's in your graveyard, except during the damage step, you can tribute a spellcaster monster to add this card to your hand. Each effect is a hard once per turn. Magician's Souls. You can send up to two spell or traps from your hand and or field to the graveyard to draw that many cards. If it's in your hand, you can send a level 6 or higher spellcaster from your deck to the graveyard, then activate one of the following effects. Special summon this card, or send this card to the graveyard, then special summon a Dark Magician or Dark Magician Girl from your graveyard. Each effect is a hard once per turn. The Dark Magicians. Requires Dark Magician or Dark Magician Girl and one Spellcaster Monster. Once per turn, if a spell, trap, or effect is activated except during the damage step, you can draw a card. Then, if it's a spell or trap, you can set it. And if it was a trap or a quick play spell, you can activate it this turn. If this card is destroyed, you can special summon both a Dark Magician and Dark Magician Girl from your hand, deck, and or graveyard. Dark Paladin. It requires Dark Magician and Buster Blader. It must be fusion summoned. When a spell card is activated, quick effect, you can discard a card to negate the activation and destroy it. This card must be face up on the field to activate and resolve this effect. It also gains 500 attack for each dragon monster in the field and in the graveyard. Red Eyes Dark Dragoon. Requires Dark Magician plus Red Eyes Black Dragon or one dragon effect monster. It can't be destroyed by card effects. 
It can't be targeted with card effects. During your main phase, you can target and destroy opponent's monsters up to the number of normal monsters used for this card summon and inflict damage equal to that monster's original attack to the opponent. Once per turn when a card or effect is activated, you can quick effect, discard a card to negate and destroy that card, and then this card gains 1000 attack permanently. Dark Cavalry requires Dark Magician plus one warrior monster. It gains 100 attack for each spell and trap on the field and in the graveyards. It inflicts piercing battle damage. When a card or effect is activated, target a card on the field, quick effect, you can discard a card to negate and destroy it. Dark Magician the Dragon Knight it requires Dark Magician plus one dragon monster. Its name becomes Dark Magician whilst it's on the field or in the graveyard. Your opponent can't target or destroy spells and traps you control. Dark Magician Girl the Dragon Knight Requires Dark Magician Girl and one Dragon Monster. Must be fusion someone with the above materials or using the Eye of Tamias. Once per turn, quick effect, you can send a card from your hand to the graveyard to pop a face-up card on the field. Amulet Dragon. Requires Dark Magician plus one Dragon Monster. Must be fusion someone with the above materials or using the Eye of Tamias. If it's special summon, you can banish any number of spells from either graveyard, and then this card gains a thousand attack for each one banished by this effect. If it's destroyed, you can special summon a spellcaster from your graveyard. Quintet Magician requires five spellcaster monsters. If it's fusion summon using five spellcasters with different names, you can nuke your opponent's board. This face-up card can't be tributed, used as fusion material, or destroyed by card effects. Ebon Illusion Magician requires two level seven monsters. You can also exceed summon it using a rank 6 spellcaster you control as material, and then all those materials are transferred to this card. Once per turn, you can detach a material from this card to special summon a spellcaster normal monster from your hand or deck. When a spellcaster normal monster declares an attack, you can banish an opponent's card. Each effect is a hard once per turn. Ebon High Magician Two level 7 spellcasters. Whilst it has the XC material, you can activate a quick play spell or trap from your hand during your opponent's turn by detaching a material from this card. If this card is destroyed by battle or goes to graveyard by an opponent's card effect, you can special summon a dark spellcaster monster from your hand or deck and then pop a card on the field. And that concludes our list of monsters, which vary on the amount they are played depending on the variant of the deck and also based on the format. Next up, we're going to be looking at some of the commonly used spell and trap support for the deck. Dark Magical Circle. When it's activated, you can look at the top three cards of your deck, then reveal a Dark Magician or a spell or trap that lists it in its text, and then add it to your hand. The rest then go back on the top in any order. If Dark Magician is summoned to your field, except during the damage step, you can banish an opponent's card. Each of these effects is a hard one per turn. Bond between Teacher and Student. If you control a Dark Magician, you can special summon a Dark Magician Girl from that hand, deck, or graveyard. Then you can set a Dark Magic Attack, Dark Burning Attack, Dark Burning Magic, or Dark Magic Twin Burst directly from your deck. You can only activate one copy of Bond per turn. Successor Soul. You can tribute an effect monster, then target one effect monster your opponent controls, send it to the graveyard, then special summon one level 7 or higher normal monster from your hand or deck. You can only activate one copy of this card per turn. You can also only attack with one monster during the turn you activate this card. Dark Magic Expanded Apply these effects in sequence based on the number of Dark Magicians and or Dark Magician Girls on the field or in either player's graveyard. For 1+, plus, you get one Dark Spellcaster on the field that can gain 1000 attack until the end of the turn. For 2+, plus, this turn your opponent can't activate cards and or effects in response to your spell trap cards or effect activations and they can't be destroyed by an opponent's card effects. And then for 3 plus, dark spellcasters you control are unaffected by your opponent's card effects until the end of the turn. Strength in Unity If you ritual or fusion using a blue eyes or dark magician you can banish a card your opponent controls or one in their graveyard. You can send this face up card from the field to the graveyard then target a level 7 or higher normal monster in your graveyard then add it to your hand or shuffle it into the deck. You can only use each effect once per turn. The Eye of Tamias. Target a Dark Magician you control, then fusion summon a fusion monster that lists that monster on the field as material, using it as material. You can only activate one copy of Eye of Tamias per turn. Dark Magic Attack. If you control a Dark Magician, destroy all spells and traps your opponent controls. Illusion Magic. 
Tribute a Spellcaster, add up to two copies of Dark Magician from your deck and or graveyard to your hand. You can only activate one copy of Illusion Magic per turn. Magicalized Fusion. You can fusion summon one Spellcaster Fusion Monster by banishing materials listed on it from your field or graveyard. You can only activate one copy per turn. Dark Burning Magic. If you control monsters whose original name are Dark Magician and Dark Magician Girl, destroy all cards your opponent controls. Dark Magic Veil. You can pay 1,000 life points to special summon a Dark Spellcaster from your hand or graveyard. Dark Magic Twin Burst. Target a Dark Magician you control. It gains attack equal to the combined attack of all Dark Magician girls currently on the field and in the graveyard until the end of this turn. You can only activate one copy of this card per turn. Eternal Soul. Every Dark Magician in your monster zone is unaffected by your opponent's card effects. If this face-up card leaves the field, destroy all monsters you control. You can only use the following effect of Eternal Soul once per turn. You can activate one of these effects. Special summon a Dark Magician from the hand or graveyard. Or you can add a Dark Magician. Or you can add a Dark Magic attack or a thousand lives from your deck to your hand. Magician Navigation. Special summon a Dark Magician from your hand. Then special summon a level 7 or lower Dark Spellcaster from your deck. Destined Rivals. If you control a Blue Eyes or Dark Magician, negate the effects of all face-up monsters your opponent currently controls until the end of this turn. You can only activate one copy of Rivals per turn. And for the final part of the video, we're looking at some sample deck lists for some different variants you could try out. These aren't tried and tested decks, but it will hopefully give you some idea of cards or ratios you can consider depending on what variant you'd like to try out. As always, I highly recommend experimenting with these builds and finding out what works for you. Again, the intention isn't go out and buy this deck, play it as you see it, because it's not tried and tested. It's just to give you some better ideas of what you could do.
And that is all for today's video on Dark Magician and Pals. Hopefully you found this interesting, insightful, and you feel like you're better equipped to play with or without... Without? against the deck. Uh, that's the idea of today's video. It's not, again, that you're going to walk away an expert, but you will walk away better equipped. If you do enjoy this kind of garbage content and you want to see more of it, of course, you should definitely hit subscribe so you don't forget to go ahead and do so. And then you can watch more of this. I uh, release three videos a week, usually deck profiles. More of these how to play videos. These are really, really popular, so they'll keep coming up. We do locals vlogs as well, so you can get an idea of what kind of idiot I am at tournaments as well. So if you're missing your locals, maybe you're missing some events due to the... Uh, unnamed thing that I can't say without getting demonetized, then you might quite enjoy that kind of stuff every single Friday. So thank you very much either way for coming along, guys. Hopefully you have really enjoyed this video in all seriousness, and uh, hopefully you do stay along for the ride, and I'll see you in the next one. This content is brought to you in association with my buddies over at Jam Jam Cards UK. You can find the links to the eBay store and the Facebook page in the description.